now i am going to start the third part of the antibody chapter where we will be discussing the monoclonal antibodies this is a very conceptual topic and sometimes as a short note in the university exam so from exam point of view it becomes a important topic for all of us to remember okay now uh, as the name suggests monoclonal so that means the antibodies which are produced from a similar kind of clone of b cells will be called as the monoclonal then that means if there is monoclonal antibody that means there must have been some polyclonal antibodies also now we know that uh, antigen does not always have a single epitope it may possess more than one epitope as well and when uh, antigen is having more than one epitope then there will be uh, activation of the b cells in different lineages according to the different epitopes of that particular antigen that means there will be polo polyclonal activation of the b cells leading to the production of different types of antibodies against different types of epitopes of that antigen that means there will be different types of antibodies and these group of antibodies are called as polyclonal antibodies but here we are learning the monoclonal antibody that means those antibodies which are produced from a single uh, which are produced from a, from a single type of clone of B cells, okay, which are producing antibodies against a particular epitope of the antigen, okay. So, those are called as the monoclonal antibody, antibodies. Now, see the definition. What I have written is that the monoclonal antibody refers to those antibodies which are derived from a single clone of plasma cells. That means those plasma cells which are activated against a single epitope of a antigen okay so a single clone of plasma cell which is produced against a single epitope of an antigen okay so that's the difference between the monoclonal and the polyclonal antibodies and here is the definition of the monoclonal antibodies so you have to start with the definition of the monoclonal antibody whenever a short note comes over this topic now the question arises how does this monoclonal antibody is produced so the technique we what is used to produce this monoclonal antibody is called as the hybridoma technique okay that is called as the hybridoma technique what is the principle of this technique the principle is that we take a immortal cell which is called as the uh, uh, i mean myeloma cell and a b cell which is activated against a particular epitope of an antigen and then what we do is that we fuse the uh, single epitope activated b cell and that myeloma cell so that a hybrid cell is formed and that hybrid cell will be immortal because it has a component of the myeloma cell as well the, uh, which are the cancerous cells which will be immortal so that means that hybrid cell will also be a immortal cell that means with this technique we are producing uh, such type of b cells which are activated against a particular type of epitope of an antigen and at the same time they are immortal also okay so that's the principle behind the hybridoma technique see i have written here also that a clone of b cell is stimulated against a single epitope of an antigen is fused with immortal cell which is most commonly the myeloma cell to produce a hybridoma cell now that hybridoma cell since has the component of myeloma cell which are the cancerous immortal cells hence this hybridoma cell will uh, be able to multiply for infinite number of times without uh, dying and at the same time since it has the component of this uh, single clone of b cell also so it will produce monoclonal antibodies as well so both the purposes are served with this uh, the technique okay. we get both the things that is the infinite multiplication plus the production of the monoclonal antibodies and that's what we require with the production of for the production of the monoclonal antibodies for our use in the medical field now the uh, procedure is very easy if you understand the concept then the procedure will become very easy for you to understand so where do we start the technique of these production of the monoclonal antibodies so we start with the injection of the uh, antigen with a single epitope into the spleen of the so see here uh, antigen with specific epitope is injected in the mouse okay and after two to three weeks we harvest the splenic b cells the splenic b cells are collected from the mouse see here the blue cells are the splenic b cells okay 
and then we also obtain the myeloma cell from somewhere and then we cause the double mutation why do we uh, do this uh, double mutation because the myeloma cells are also originating from the b cells they will also have uh, the ability to produce their own uh, antibodies which we do not want we want the production of the antibodies which are against a particular type of antigen which we are injecting into the mouse we do not want the antibodies of those myeloma cells na so we what will what will we do is we will cause the double mutation in those myeloma cells so that those myeloma cells forget to produce their own antibodies okay so let's see here we have done the double mutation here and after double mutation what do we do we keep the uh, the harvested splenic b cells from the uh, mouse plus the double mutated myeloma cells into the polyethylene glycol broth that is the peg broth and once we keep those two types of cells into the peg broth then what happens three types of cells are obtained then three types of cells are obtained one is the unfused myeloma cells which are uh, which you can see here these red ones okay these red ones are the unfused myeloma cells then the second you uh, we find the unfused splenic b cells that you can see here the blue cells okay the blue cells in the peg broth are the unfused splenic b cells plus we also get this fused cells okay this fused cells are hybridoma cell can you see these cells which are half blue half red so these are the fused cells okay these are called as the hybridoma cells now what do we do we pour these uh cells i mean we collect these cells uh, the cells from the peg broth we collect the cells from the peg broth and we culture it on the hat media now what is that hat media hat media is the hypoxanthine aminopterin thymidine media okay this hat media is very important because that will help us in selecting the hybridoma cell only so we grow the uh, the all the cells uh, which are present in the in that pig broth in on the uh, hat medium and then we culture over the hat medium so uh, when we are culturing over the hat medium what we see that the myeloma cells cannot grow over that hat medium but, and the uh, splenic b cells they can grow but die soon but why is this all happening we know that the Uh, for the synthesis of the genetic material we need purines plus pyrimidines now purines synthesis the synthesis of the purines can occur by two methods one is the de novo method and the other is the salvage pathway i i hope you must remember it from your biochemistry knowledge that the purine synthesis occurs by two methods one is the de novo pathway and the other one is the salvage pathway now the aminopterin which is present in the hat media that aminopterin inhibits the de novo pathway that means we are left with only with the as uh, only with the salvage pathway and in the salvage pathway the hypoxanthine is utilized to produce the purines which are uh, used later on to produce the genetic material of the cell so the cells are left with only one pathway to produce their purines that is the salvage pathway now for the salvage pathway to occur there is a very important enzyme which is required that is called as the hdpratase enzyme okay now the myeloma cells lack the hdpratase enzyme now what happens as they lack the hd hdprt enzyme so they cannot do the uh, salvage pathway and on the other hand the aminopterin is inhibiting the de novo pathway that means they cannot produce purine at all so as the myeloma cells are not able to produce the uh, uh, the purines so they cannot uh, make the genetic material and hence they cannot divide and they die soon okay so that's why these myeloma cells die off now what happens with these splenic b cells so splenic b cells can grow because they have the uh, sgprt enzyme but they are but they are not immortal na so they die sooner or later okay so the splenic b cells also dies but what happens to those hybridoma cells is that they have uh, since they are the they are made from uh, the fusion of the b cells plus the myeloma cells so they have the hgprt enzyme from the uh, b cells plus they have the immortality uh, feature from the myeloma cells that means they are immortal also they are 
they have the HGPRTase enzyme also. That means they will be able to produce the purines by the salvage pathways and plus they are immortal also. So they will continue to grow over the head medium. So see here what happens to the fate of this, what is the fate of the cells? So the unfused myeloma cells, they cannot grow. While the unfused splenic B cells, they can grow but soon die. While the hybridoma cell can grow and survive long because they have mortality factor na, from the uh, obtained uh, fr uh, from the myeloma cell. Okay, so these hybridoma cells they can grow and survive long. They can grow and survive long. See here in the picture also we can see that the these are the these all are the these are the our hybridoma cells and they are growing here. They are growing here in the culture medium. Now these hybridoma cells are filtered and selected okay they are selected and filtered out see here they, they are selected and allowed to proliferate in vivo now the proliferation can occur in vivo in vivo that is in the mouse or can occur in vitro that is on the culture media and once we uh, uh, once we you know prol make them to proliferate either in vivo or in vitro then these uh, as they will be proliferating they will also be producing the monoclonal antibodies okay because they have got that property from their splenic b cells so they will be keep they will be producing the monoclonal antibody along with their proliferation that means we will be getting the monoclonal antibodies and then after we get the monoclonal antibody antibodies we will purify it and then we will use in the medical field in the different technologies so that's all the procedure by which we produce the monoclonal antibodies in the laboratory which is used in the diagnostic field in the therapeutic field in the research field everywhere there is use of the monoclonal antibodies even nowadays the monoclonal antibodies are used in the cancer plus immunosuppressive therapies as well okay so this is how we produce the monoclonal antibodies in the laboratory now come to the types of the monoclonal antibodies so depending upon the components of the uh, protein part of the uh, monoclonal antibodies there are four types of monoclonal antibodies number one is the mouse monoclonal antibodies where the 100 percent protein is mouse derived okay then we have the chimeric monoclonal antibodies where 30 percent is mouse protein and 66 percent is human protein and the human humanized monoclonal antibodies has 10% mouse protein while 90% human protein whereas the human monoclonal antibodies has 100% human derived protein okay so this will be less reactive in the human body while the mouse monoclonal antibody since has 100% mouse protein so they this will be more reactive in the human body so we will be preferably using this human monoclonal antibody because this is 100% human derived protein okay so these are the four types of monoclonal antibodies and the components of the protein part from mouse and the human. Now coming to the use of the monoclonal antibody. As I told earlier also monoclonal antibody has a wide uh, use in the modern uh, uh, microbiology plus modern uh, medical field. In the diagnostic field, in the therapeutic field, in the research field, everywhere there is use of the monoclonal antibodies. Okay, in the cancer treatment, in the immunosuppression, everywhere. So let's see what are the uses of the monoclonal antibodies. Number one is the passive immunity. So we can produce the immunoglobulins with this technique, like the ERIG. Okay, like human uh, rabies immunoglobulin HRIG. So that is the uh, immunoglobulin against the rabies virus which we inject during the post exposure prophylaxis of the rabies. Uh, okay, so th that is the uh, type of passive immunity that we can provide with the monoclonal antibodies that is HRIG, human uh, rabies immunoglobulin. Then we have got the diagnostic use as I was uh, telling you all that uh, for the detection of the HBS antigen uh, by the ELISA technique in the rapid test kits we are using this type of monoclonal antibodies this type of monoclonal antibodies are already coated over those test kits and when we run the uh, sera over the test kits over that you know uh, filter paper or the nitrocellular membrane of those test kits then the antigens run over those uh, test kits and then combine with the with these type of monoclonal antibodies over the nitrocellulose membrane and they uh, produce different types of test reactions or uh, 
फॉर दैट मैटर वी सी दी लाइन्स ओवर दोज टेस्ट किट्स ना सो दोज टेस्ट किट्स आई मीन दोज लाइन्स विच आर प्रोड्यूस ओवर दोज टेस्ट किट्स आर नथिंग बट दी रिएक्शन बिटवीन द एंटीजन एंड द मोनोकुल एंटीबॉडी दो दोज मोनोकुल एंटीबॉडी विच आर ऑलरेडी इम्प्रेग्नेटेड ओवर दोज नाइट्रोसोल मेम्ब्रेन वाइल द एंटीजन इज इन द प्रेजेंट इन द सीरा सो दैट इज हाउ वी कैन डिटेक्ट द एंटीजन इन द सीरा ऑफ अ पेशेंट बाय दोज टेस्ट किट्स यूजिंग दिस मोनोकुल एंटीबॉडी टेक्नोलॉजी सो दैट्स द डायग्नोस्टिक यूज then we have the therapeutic use so uh, in cancers in the autoimmune conditions we there are different types of uh, uh, antibody uh, monoclonal antibodies like there are different tnf alpha inhibitors infliximab uh, golimumab there are different, you, i must uh, i i i know you must have uh, learned it from your pharmacology that there are different types of monoclonal antibodies okay in uh, tnf alpha inhibitors Uh, uh, which are used in the immunosuppression and different types of uh, diseases like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and all. So uh, those are all the uses of the uh, therapeutic uses of the monoclonal antibodies. Then we have the identification of the cells. So we can identify the helper T cells by anti CD4 monoclonal antibodies because CD4 is present over the helper T cells. So if you make a monoclonal antibodies. which are against the cd4 then we can detect the helper t cells also because that will react only with the helper t cells so this is all in a nutshell the uses of the um, monoclonal antibody but there are many more uses of the monoclonal antibody that i am not going to discuss here uh, if you want to remember then uh, read uh, uh, some more uh, uses of the monoclonal antibody from the books and for our exam point, from our exam point of view this is enough to know okay so that's all about the monoclonal antibodies this procedure is very important to remember and it is very easy also if you remember this diagram of the you know this diagram of the monoclonal uh, uh, diagram of the procedure of the uh, production of monoclonal antibody then you can write this theory part very easily then you can write this theory part very easily okay so please uh, learn this um, you know chart with heart and please remember the definition of the monoclonal antibody so that's all about the monoclonal antibodies